Okay, I am switching cameras, and uh, can you guys hear me now? It should be back on. No sound at all. Give me one second. Okay. All right, the sound should be back on. It says it's rolling. I see a little uh, sound bar kicking on. Okay, awesome. Sorry about that, friends. Sometimes the computer does weird things and I have to just click the little buttons to reactivate my items. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite blocks of all time. Welcome, everybody. Sorry you couldn't hear me, so let me go back to the beginning. My name is Yvonne. Welcome to the Jelly Roll Club. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite blocks of all time, which is the Peaky and Spike block. And so that's what we're going to be making today because we're going to use this to make the Peaky and Spike star. And we're going to be talking about that. Um, if you can hear me, awesome. If you cannot hear me, you may want to go back out and come back in because there was a weird delay and so my sound was off for just a minute. Okay, so let's talk about the block. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to share my desktop. And you guys should be able to see my desktop now. And let me pull this. So Peaky and Spike was a block um, that's from a vintage block called 5440 or fight. So it's an old, old, old block. But a lady named Doreen Speckman in the early, early to mid 80s created um, a bunch of quilts using this particular block. And then she wrote a book called The Adventures with Peaky and Spike. And one of the, the sad things is that Doreen Speckman passed away in 99. But Doreen Speckman was like a brilliant quilter. And one of her specialties was playing with pattern. And so her book is called Pattern Play. And that is one of the things that I'm going to be talking about. So these are some of her, Doreen Speckman's quilts. And so um, they were on display in Iowa not that long ago, and she had an entire series. But Doreen Speckman created this nickname for these blocks, and this is the quilt that you can also make with this block. So if you look at this carefully, this is the block that we're going to be doing right here in the middle. And then all these are are four patches and half square triangles. But it creates some of the most intricate, beautiful patterns that require very little work. Okay, and so let me show you another one. So this one's with a light background. So this is called the 5440 or Fight, and it has the leggy star in there, and just by switching where you add the lights and the darks, you can really make an amazing quilt. And so let me go back to where we were, and so that's what we're gonna be working on today. So let me tell you what I've posted on my website and if you cannot hear me, please let me know, okay? So on my website, um, I posted the pattern for the 5440 or fight block, also known as the Peaky and Spike star. And so I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little spiky star and it has little legs. I also posted the templates for those of you who love foundation paper piecing. I, I'm not a super fan of foundation paper piecing, but some people love it. So I created those and I posted them in the description of this video. And then I also made templates that can be used with freezer paper and I put them in there. And I did that because not everybody has access to what I'm going to be using. So if, if you can't hear me, please go ahead and go out and then come back in. You should be able to hear me. So today I'm going to use this particular set of rulers, and I just dropped mine. And they're called the Peaky and Spike Rulers by Marty Mitchell, right? So let me show you what they look like. So the Peaky and Spike Rulers are also known as Wonder Triangles. Um, and so this says Wonder Triangles, Quilt Sense, they have different names, but these are by Marty Mitchell. And I love these 
particular templates because you can make them in multiple sizes, like uh, three inch, four inch, five inch, and six inch. And, and so this is one of my favorite rulers. Normally I don't recommend rulers, but this is one of my favorites. Okay, so let me show you. So what happens if you don't have this ruler? Let me show you how to make your own templates. If you don't have access to a printer, I will show you. The only thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need to know the finished size of these blocks. And these units are gonna be four and a half inches. So I'm gonna go through what we need. So the first thing that you're gonna do if you don't have a ruler is you're gonna draw yourself a four and a half inch square. This is my four and a half inch ruler, so I'm just gonna line it up right here and I'm gonna quickly draw. So if you don't have a fancy template, never fear, you can always make your own. Okay, and so this is a four and a half inch square, but this four and a half inch square needs some other lines. So if you notice, this is the foundation paper piece uh, template, and this has a quarter inch line all the way around. So you're gonna wanna take this particular block and you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a quarter inch line all the way around. And make sure you use a, a very thin pencil when you're doing this, if you're making your own templates. You're just gonna draw a quarter of an inch all the way around like this because those are your seam allowances. And so if you do not have a printer or you do not have fancy templates, you can make your own. And I'm just using a piece of cardstock. Okay, and so now that I have a four and a half inch square and I have my seam allowance, then I need to find the middle of this, so just like this, because this is where I start. So since this is four and a half inches, the halfway mark of this little peak right here for your triangle is gonna be two and one fourth. If you have a ruler like mine, um, this has a center line going this way and a center line going that way. So you can just line it up if you have one of these rulers. Mine has a two and a fourth inch line and I can just mark that and so I'm just gonna line that up like this and I'm gonna mark that point right there. And then I'm gonna come and I'm gonna join this spot right here with this uh, little spot on my seam allowance. So I'm gonna bring it over and I'm gonna line it up just like that. And then I'm gonna line it up over to the other side. And this is just a piece of cardstock. And then I'm gonna come this way. And so this is how I want to create my templates. So now, this is my middle, right? So this piece like this, piece B, but it requires seam allowances. So you, you're gonna to wanna to draw a couple of these um, on your paper, draw like four, and then you're gonna to wanna to cut this one by adding seam allowances, and you're gonna to wanna to cut uh, a reverse image of C and D if you have your templates. So this would be C on your templates, this would be D, and this would be B, right? And you're gonna wanna make sure that you add your seam allowance to these inside pieces. So you could cut D like this, but you would add a seam allowance on this side, et cetera, et cetera. Are you guys understanding what I, what I mean? So for example, if I wanted to make template B, I would just come in here and I would add that quarter inch seam allowance like this and I would add a quarter inch seam allowance to the other side and then you would cut this shape with the little blunted end and you would cut it down here and that would be your uh, piece. So I could take my paper scissors and I would now have a template B. Knowing where the seam allowances are on your blocks, super important when you're a, a quilter, whether you're a new quilter or an old quilter, this is a super important skill. Because sometimes when we're putting our subunits together, you can't really tell 
where those are and you don't even need this little bit okay and so if you have a shape that looks like this then you're ready to sew piece b right and so if you notice this is the same size and you can nip the little corners if you want like this a tiny nip so i'm just rounding them a tiny bit and then this bottom i'm going to nip this way and that just cuts out your bunny ears if you don't want to trim your bunny ears later but you can make your very own template and that would be b and then you could draw this square again and you could make a c with um seam allowances and a d and make sure it has a seam allowance on this side it already has two seam allowances here. You would just be adding the seam allowance on this side, okay? And maybe this helps you to visualize. So when I would draw C, I would have this seam allowance already in there, but I would just be adding this seam allowance here by adding a quarter of an inch, okay? So that's for those of you who do not have a printer. So you can just make these with cardstock four and a half inch ruler will get it done. All right, so four and a half inch ruler is one of my favorite things, that's what I'm using. Um, I'm gonna be using these Quilt Sense uh, rulers and I'm gonna be talking about trimming with rulers and reading the numbers on them because they can be tricky. And then I'm gonna show you how to put together our block. So let me get uh, a different mat so you can see what I'm doing here. And we're going to get started. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, yeah, you can print. Let me see. What questions do we have in there? Uh, they can hear me now. And, yes, you can print all of these. So the things that I have for you to print, if you want to, you can have paper piece uh, templates for this, or you can have what are called my freezer paper templates, which look like this. Right? So you either are going to have freezer paper templates like these. These can also be used for hand piecing. Or you're going to have foundation paper piece templates like this. Or you're going to draw your own if you don't have access to a printer. And you're going to make them like this so that they have those seam allowances all the way around. Okay? All right. I'm also using a four and a half inch ruler to square up my units. And I always lay my ruler once I print just to check the sizes. And these are the correct size. I printed 100% with no scaling. And now I'm going to show you what I need to make the block. So for this block, I'm going to make four star legs that look like this. And yes, there's a seam allowance there that's a quarter of an inch because you don't want to chop that block off. And there's a little blunted corner and that's also where you have your quarter inch seam. So you're gonna notice that this has a little blunted corner that has a small seam allowance on both sides and then one at the top. And that's what you want because you're gonna end up, once I sew this down, you're gonna end up with a nice sharp point at the bottom and a nice sharp point at the top. All right, these are what my pieces look like. I'm gonna need a left and a right in different colors or all the same, it's up to you. And so I'm gonna take my little cutter and the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my star legs. Um, I'm gonna need four of these units, so I need eight star legs, four in one direction and four in the opposite direction. Uh, yes, I will, I've already added one of the handouts, but I will add them to the website as well. And you can also find any of my handouts you can find them on the YouTube channel, and let me show you quickly where you can find that. For those who are looking for the templates, let me show you where to find those. So let me share my desktop. If you go to the YouTube channel, let me open that, and you go and you view the channel, when you get to this tab called Community, there's a link, and when you open it where it says Read More, it has the all of the handouts. It has the foundation paper piece handout, the hand sewing, and fusible method. So if you want all of the handouts, they're all listed under the Peaky and Spike image that you see. So if you want to know where to find them, that's where you can find them. Okay, friends? Does anybody have any additional questions? I'll be glad to answer them before we get started. All right, so let's get rolling. So I'm going to use four of one color 
like this. And these are two and a half inches by four and a half inches. I also need four of another color, and these are also two and a half inches by four and a half inches. So these are my jelly roll strips. So you need one strip of this color and one strip of this color. I need four and a half inch squares for the corners of my block. And I'm also gonna use um, a solid square this time for the middle. If you don't have a solid square for the middle, you can make a four patch like we did before by just sewing four two and a half inch blocks. You can make them different, you can make them the same, or you can sew two jelly roll strips together and make a four and a half inch square for the center. So if you don't have a big piece, you can just piece it together. So one four and a half inch for the middle. I need four background pieces that are four and a half inch by four and a half inch for the corners. And then I have a strip that's four and a half inches wide that I'm gonna use to make the spikes that go inside these legs. Um, in order to cut these, you're gonna need to lay your template like this, and so you can rotary cut this. If you put them on freezer paper, and then once you cut that, you can just rotate the template the opposite direction and cut them out like this, and rotate the template the opposite direction, cut it out like that and then rotate the template this way so that you're not wasting any fabric, okay? So you can either, like I said, make your own or use a ruler. I uh, am gonna use a ruler really quick to cut all of mine because like I said, this is my favorite ruler, but I'm gonna show you something that's interesting about this. This ruler says it has multi-sizes, right? So it says, uh, three inches, four inches, five inches, and it has all these weird uh, lines. And this line right here is the four inch line. And I thought, wow, I wanna make a four and a half inch unit. Which of these lines should I make? Once I printed my templates, and actually once I cut these out, I realized quickly that these had some odd measurements. And so when I laid this down, and I marked it, I realized that my strip needed to be four inches wide. And so even though I'm making four and a half inch units, this is giving me the finished size of the block before it's sewn into a quilt, uh, bef after it's sewn into a quilt, not the raw size or the unfinished. So what I did is I just had to make sure that I knew where I was cutting and then I was ready to begin. So everything on this one is gonna line up with the four inch line, even though this is a four and a half inch unfinished block. And that's because this template gives me finished after they're sewn into the quilt sizes, which can be confusing for new quilters. So if you don't know what your uh, rulers are asking you to do, just check and see. And so I'm just gonna lay this on the four I'm gonna make sure that I line this up. Let me find my rotary cutter over here. And I'm just gonna use it. I could lay this out and have less waste. I'm just gonna line it up on the four and quickly cut like this. This wants me to cut my dog ears off. And this poor little mat has so many grooves if you get a mat that you've used a lot, sometimes you get grooves and it won't cut as easily, then you know it's time to get a new mat. So let me flip this over. Just cutting two at a time. These don't have a direction, a left and a right. They just go one way. So I'm gonna line up this line along the bottom because I cut the strip to width. And I'm just gonna chop that off. I love this block because you can invert the light and dark and it doesn't really matter which way you put it. Okay, maybe I need to move my woolly mat because it's causing me problems. Try to leave my woolly mat under here but it's not helping me. All right, there we go. There we go. And let's trim the other one. I need a total of four. So I'm gonna flip it the other way and it wastes very little fabric. Whenever I have a strip 
set that I'm having to cut from one end, I start from the open end and I leave the folded end on this side because I end up with larger scraps. And so the bigger the scraps, the better. I work with a lot of four and a half inch pieces because I use jelly roll strips. So when you sew two jelly roll strips together, you end up with four and a half inch squares. And then look, see how that didn't quite trim it? Because I was cutting on a soft surface. Don't do that, people. You're gonna cause yourself problems. Okay, so I got rid of those weird things. Now the template wants me to cut these little bunny ears off and see how it has those. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna line it up. It has like a little spot where you can line up that bunny ear and chop it off. So see where it wants me to cut those straight off? So I'm just gonna take and line it up like this and chop these little bunny ears off. But you don't have to. I just, I just do. And you just line it up, any one of those little bunny ears, just so you can chop them off. But you can leave them on or you can chop them off, it doesn't matter. I like to have them chopped off, so I just take and I remove them. So there you have them. You have four of these pieces. Then I'm gonna cut, and this you have to pay attention to the order because you want one to be a mirror image of the other. So you're gonna cut all, I'm gonna cut all of my star legs that are red going this direction. And so that means I need to pay attention to my ruler. And I want that piece to be this way. So I'm gonna to have to use my ruler on the reverse side. So this is what I meant by a reverse image. So this I'm gonna cut from the back. Right, so that means I need to cut them this way. I'm gonna flip my fabric over and I'm gonna do probably all four at one, one time. If you're not uh, super comfortable with your rotary cutter, you may not wanna cut four at one time, but I'm gonna cut four at one time. I'll just need three. And so I'm gonna lay this down, line it up with the four inch line on this one Give it a trim. This one has bunny ears that you're supposed to remove. It has these little nubs I can take out if I want to. So I'm just gonna line it up with this little nubby trimmer that's on the end of this one. And this is my quarter inch seam that goes here. And this one you can trim the nubby, but you don't have to on this end right here. Like I said, this is optional. I just like to do it because it makes it easier in the end. All right, so I have all of these going one direction, and now I have to cut my other star legs, and I'm gonna go ahead and use four. If you noticed on my sample, I used this color, but this Jelly Roll strip has um, these deep uh, serrated edges, and so it made this block not quite fit and so this ended up skewed by a 16th of an inch and I didn't like that. So anytime that you have a jelly roll strip that you buy that's a commercial jelly roll strip, if they have these little serrated edges, really measure if your um, strip is a full two and a half inches. Sometimes they're not, so you gotta be careful. This one is, this one's a Moda jelly roll and they tend to be very accurate. All right, so now I want these to go the opposite direction, right? These are going one way and these are gonna go the other way. So I'm gonna lay these here. And this is super important that all of your pieces are going the correct direction. Otherwise you're gonna end up with eight legs that are going the same way and you're not gonna be a happy camper. Again, jelly roll strip, four and a half inches long. On this ruler, it lines up with the four. And we're gonna get rid of that. Yeah, works so much better when it's not on a wool mat. And like I said, you can come and, and take these little nubs off. And these are just to help you line the, the pieces up too when you're sewing. All right. So there I have my star legs 
and they look like this. They have like a little notch and that should be your quarter inch seam. And that's removing your bunny ears ahead of time. And you're gonna have your pieces that come in here and yes, they do have a blunted edge like this. See? So now I'm just gonna take these, my little stack, I'm gonna line these up. I'm gonna line these two edges that are blunted down here at the bottom and this little weird blunted edge up here at the top. And so this is why it has these edges trimmed is so that you can line them up nicely. And so I'm gonna put all four of mine really quick. And you always start with one side. It doesn't matter if it's red, it doesn't matter if it's blue, but you always sew um, four of these on the same side, not the opposite sides, right? So always the same way because this helps with pressing later. And so I'm gonna take both of these. Uh, somebody has a question, will there be additional six inch blocks posted? Yes, I will be posting additional blocks as we go through the series. There's gonna be like bonus blocks that I'm gonna do and those are gonna be like miniature versions of the big blocks. So I'm gonna be posting extra templates for you guys to use that are like mini versions of some of our bigger, simpler blocks. Okay. And I will sew this on this side. Um, this is a bias edge, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your fabric is pressed and lightly starched before you start cutting. But if you haven't done that, that's okay, that works too. All right, so let me go over here to the sewing machine. I'm just gonna sew these little friends right along the edge. Um, if you are not sure where your quarter inch seam is along this line, then I suggest you put a little post-it note with your quarter inch seam line because it's super important that you, uh, you align that edge. And so I'm gonna back stitch and I'm gonna check it. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna line up that edge. Those blunted corners also keep your um, triangle edges from getting chewed up by your feed dogs. And so that's another benefit of blunting those edges. Um, I purchased my template set um, on Amazon, but you can find them in, in a lot of places. Local quilt shop, uh, my local quilt shop carried a different version of it that I also have. So if you want the, the rulers, there's a lot of places to grab those. But you can just Google Peaky and Spike template set and these are super easy to find. Whenever you're sewing a bias edge, don't push or pull your fabric. I just let the feed dogs do their work. Let the feed dogs do their magic. And that just makes life so much easier. All right. Normally I have a leader in an ender, but not today. All right. All right, friends, so let me grab my woolly mat. Do not put this under your woolly mat because it will warp. And then you're gonna be really sad like I was when I warped my last one. Okay, so all of these have to be pressed in the same way, if you notice how I press them, I press the first one towards the dark and I have a thread that's contrasting so you can see it. I press this first one towards the dark, this background, and then this one I pressed this way. And the reason I did that is to reduce the amount of bulk. I didn't want them both going in or both going out because that creates kind of a mess and I wanted that uh, intersection to lay nice and flat. If you notice how flat that is, that's because of the pressing, okay? And so this channel is a teaching channel and that's why I show all of the parts to a block because I want people to understand how that works. And so it doesn't matter which one you sew in and which one you sew out as long as you're consistent. 
So for me, I'm just doing all of those. My tension was a little tight on my sewing machine, so it's a little rumply, but that's okay because I'm just gonna press that to set the seam. And that flattens the block. I can also tighten my stitch length to 2.0. That really helps as well. And if you do this accurately, you won't have to do a lot of trimming of this block. All right, so the very first one, I'm gonna press. So I'm gonna lay this down like this and I'm gonna press this towards the triangle. And I'm not dragging or pulling, I'm just coming from the back. And I'm gonna press towards that triangle. I'll let my iron sit on there and then you can use a clapper because I want that to be as flat as possible. And then I want you to notice what happens when you don't trim the edges. You end up with a little bunny ear, but I can come in and trim it now. I'm just gonna lay that clapper on there and I'm gonna press all of these carefully towards that outside piece. And like I said, you don't wanna stretch this because then your little star legs get distorted. So I just kinda tap it with my fingers and I use the heat from the iron to make the fabric behave itself. And I end up with really, really flat blocks when I use the clapper and a woolly mat. So I just lay that on there. Like I said, set the seam. Come in here carefully, flip it one direction. You can press it from both sides. And I always run my iron along the stitch line because that stretches it the least. Just kind of finger press your stuff lightly. And you can even press two at a time. All right. Flip them over. Like I said, don't distort your block. See, I didn't press that one correctly, so I'm gonna come in with the iron and just kind of tease it back to where it needs to go with my fingers like this. Just kind of tickle and pull it into place without distorting it. There we go. So now that you have one side done on all of these, you're gonna take and you're gonna bring your pieces and you're gonna flip them over on top, just like I did the other one, like this. There's a nice little notch. And that V-notch allows this to lay flat. So you're lining it up with the top, right? You notice how mine has that little V-notch? And this is on the templates that I, that I have for you and the ruler templates. So by doing that, it lines up this edge and this one here. If you notice, this has a little notch and then you can line that up just like that. Right, that little point should be touching this edge right here. And that's just to help you line it up. So you're gonna do that to all of them. And you're gonna sew, in this case, from this bottom up to the peak to make sure that you're going through that intersection. And you can um, sew it on this side if you want, but you're gonna wanna make sure that you're, you're at a quarter inch through this intersection right here. So I'm just going to line this up, flip down, and I'm gonna pin it in place. And I do that to keep it from shifting. Some people don't bother pinning and that's okay if you feel like Pinning, you pin. If you don't feel like pinning, you don't pin. There is no quilt police that's going to tell you to do it any other way. You do it however you feel like doing it. All right, so let me finish this one here. And these beautiful little star legs come together really, really fast. Like I said, I always line it up and then flip it. So 
So anytime that a pattern t tells you to shows you pieces that are identical, that are mirror image, you can always just take one pattern piece and cut the pieces one way and then flip and then cut them the other way. And I always write on my pattern like mirror image, cut four, this direction, cut five, and that just helps me. So I do like having paper templates because it allows me to line up my stuff, right? All right, let me sew these really quick and show you how fast this goes together. And there is literally minimal, minimal trimming on this if you have an accurate quarter inch seam. I'm just gonna hold my tails, line that up and get it started. Sometimes I just kind of back tack it just one stitch, but it doesn't, doesn't have to be done. I just do it sometimes. All right, let's go quickly. Like I said, I let my sewing machine do the work. Rather than wrestle with the fabric, I just let the machine do what it's supposed to. Line it up with that edge. It should be nice and even. I didn't trim all of the dog ears on the tan fabric, so the little dog ear tried to go under my feed dogs. So I encourage you to make your templates and trim the little doggy ears off because that helps you. All right, these three, four are done. Let me get them out of here, show you what they look like. They're looking pretty good, I think. All right. Let's talk about intersections. This is an important lesson for new quilters who don't want to chop off their points. Intersections are these spaces where two blocks meet. Anytime that you have a point on a star, you're gonna to wanna to check that your intersection is one fourth of an inch from that edge. If it is, if it's one fourth of an inch, this point from this edge over here, then you know for sure that when you sew the next piece on top of here with a quarter inch seam, that it's not gonna get chopped off. And so when I lay that on there, I'm gonna be dead on and that point will stay perfect. All right, so now let's look at how we're pressing this just so you can see, right? I press this one this way, so that means this one is gonna go towards the background. So I'm just gonna set the seams first, and then I'm gonna press that towards the background like this. So I'm gonna lay this down with my finger and just bring it right over here. And pressing is probably one of the hardest things to learn as far as a new quilter because there's a tendency to want to kind of wrestle with your quilt blocks, especially if they don't want to lay down. And so one of the things that I often do is if they don't want to lay down is I just lay something heavy on top of them. No heat, no iron, just lay something on top of them and come back and wrestle with them later. Okay, by having this go this direction, I have the least amount of bulk in here. I don't have as much bulk. Now you could flip it this way if you really wanted to, and you see that intersection, that should be at least a fourth of an inch, and so I'm gonna check it, and I do have a fourth of an inch from this point up this way, and so that makes me happy. But either way, I'm pressing mine this way to reduce the bulk in that seam, but you could do it another way if you wanted to flip it with this seam to the outside. You could do it to the outside. Either way works, but I found that I had way too many layers I didn't like, and they weren't laying the way I wanted it to. So just experiment with your seams and see which ways work for you. Some people like their seams open. If, that's, if you're a seams open kind of a person, that's fine, but it doesn't work great for this block. So I'm just gonna lay those so that they lay flat. And I'm going to try not to wrestle with them too much. 
I'm just going to come in, flatten that out, and leave that iron on there. And I might use my cordless iron because it gets much hotter. This baby iron is great for traveling, but it doesn't get quite as hot as my big one. So a nice hot iron is very helpful for all these things. Like I said, I always kind of hold it, turn the fabric where I want it to go, flip it the other direction, and make sure that you have pressed it nice and flat and straight from the other side. If you have a pucker like this in your seam, you can just tease it with your fingers like this and then flatten it, but not too much, right? You don't want to get out of control so that those seams are going crazy. Like I said, sometimes they don't want to lay the, the way I want them to. So I just have to play with that. If you notice, this seam does not have a full fourth of an inch, so I'm going to inspect it to see what I did wrong. And you can see right here, this seam is off. So I'm going to have to come in and probably unpick this side and straighten that out because what I don't want is for that point to be off right here. And that's how you fix that. You always flip it back. I could probably cheat the seam and make a narrow seam, but I'd rather not because that's a weak seam. And so I can come in here and I can remove this piece off of there, or I could come in here and remove that little section and straighten it out because that just means my piece was off. Right? I could come in here and just make that seam deeper if I wanted to, just by a hair. But what this means is that seam needed to be just a tiny bit deeper. Does that make sense? We'll see. I might fix it or I might make a new one. Who knows? Raise your hand or let, tell me in the chats if sometimes you've just discarded a piece and said, the heck with it, I'm not seam ripping. I'm just going to make a new one. You can do that. Or sometimes you can press it the opposite way. Look at this. When I press it this way, I have enough there, and I think I'm going to leave it like that. So I'm going to give it a, a good hard press with this iron. And I might just cheat it and squeeze it in there. Let's hope my legs don't get chopped off, right? All right, big iron, pulling out the big iron. This one looks good. Nice quarter-inch seam there. This one looks pretty good. Big quarter-inch seam. This one is nice quarter inch seam. That was my tester block. And then last but not least, let's get this lady going where she wants. And I'm going to flip her the way she's supposed to go. And she has a quarter inch seam going the way she should. Yeah, let's flip it this way. All right. Like I said, if you have a piece that's not exactly where it should be, you can just tease it with your fingers and lay your iron down and press rather than iron. And just move your iron across and you get those nice pieces. So there I have it to put my block together. Let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take four of these and put them in the corners. Let me see if I need to make this even bigger. Move my tools out of the way. And this is a very straightforward block. It goes like this in a nine patch configuration. I'm going to put these just like this on all four sides. I'm going to put a blue in the middle, one of these at the bottom, and then one in each corner of these blanks, and then I have my block. If I wanted this to be a 5440 or fight block, which gives you the illusion of curves without uh, being curves, you could just switch the order of these colors and then you could put four patches in here to make a totally different quilt. So this is, this is it, people. As long as you have a little quarter inch, uh, little nub right here, a seam allowance, then you should be fine. Um, if you're like me, I may have to come in and fix this one. I'm not sure. I might 
might leave it alone and then you just put it together in rows just like this and you come in here whenever I have a block I lay it completely out and I do what's called stringing the block which just means I'm keeping all of the bits together in order and I'm doing the next one in order like this I'm going to lay that one on top and then I'm doing the last one in order I lay this one on top and then I just sew on this side where the pins are Barbara says you fix it yeah I should probably fix it but I'm making two of these so I may keep the imperfect one for myself most of the time I fix it because it bothers me I suffer from sometimes quilting OCD anybody else suffer from that where you're just like nope I'm gonna take it apart and I'm gonna fix it and then you just come over here and you're gonna set, line these up and sew them make sure that you're using a nice accurate quarter inch it really helps when you're doing stuff like this to use a nice accurate quarter inch seam using a leader and an ender helps and just marking your quarter inch seam on your sewing machine bed is also important if you tend to um, press to the side you're going to want to use a scant quarter inch if you press open you can use more of an accurate quarter inch and that makes a difference all right we'll see how bad this one ends up let me take it out friends let me take it out it might not take it out let me see you see how it turns out all right I'm gonna go ahead and use a leader and ender just makes life easy later on all right let's see if I should have taken it out or not my OCD will get me and if if it didn't turn out the way I like it's gonna get taken out Oop, I didn't chop it, so that's one's gonna stay. Look, see it? Nice accurate point. So that one gets to stay, it gets to live in the quilt. And this one looks pretty good. This one will live in the quilt too. So hmm. do you guys do that? Angly challenged. Look stitched on the wrong side this one definitely comes out I don't use a seam ripper I use a snipper for those of you who are not friends of the seam ripper I use a snipper I flipped that the wrong way how did I do that it happens all the time but not as often there we go just use my scissor this nice little snipper with a sharp point takes makes light work of that um, try not to drag and pull there we go I should have sewn on this side and that happens whenever you do that and you have to seam rip I go back and I press and that's super important because this edge will get distorted so you have to come in and just give it a press like this so anytime I seam rip, I press that edge just to push the fabric back to where it needed to be. And then I can go ahead and sew. And if you notice, I am using. So I'm going to put it together like this. And I'm going to go sew that baby. If you don't regularly use snips, they're my best friend. They're a two-in-one tool. And so my snips are my bestest of friends. Okay, once you have all of these, <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm a little bit OCD. But sometimes when you're on live TV, the last thing you need to do is spend, you know, 20 minutes seam ripping. So sometimes it just has to be what it has to be. So this is good for me. All right, so then the last one goes like this. Like I said, again, pinning is usually helpful because that's the side that I'm supposed to be sewing on. Pinning on this side. I think this one's going to turn out pretty good. Even though I didn't seam rip, I probably should have seam ripped the other one, but we'll see. All right, so I don't press these seams until I join the horizontal rows. So when I do vertical rows, I don't press, and I don't press until the end when I get ready to sew the rows in the opposite direction. All right, so now this gets stitched over at the machine. It won't take me but a minute. All right. Line those back up along that edge. And this machine goes pretty fast. You kind of got to watch it because uh, this brother goes twice as fast as my other machine. So sometimes I get a little happy with my foot down below and it can cause me problems. All right. And so we're gonna show you what this block is almost ready to look like. One last pressing. All right. Let me snip off of the little threads. And see how this is still snipped together. So just break those apart. I always snip my threads as I go. I find it less messy. All right, so now that I have these, they're not pressed in any particular direction. I'm gonna press them in the direction that I want. So I'm gonna flip these to the back because this is important. Because these are the spikes that, at the, the points at the top, and these are not, uh, as urgency, this one's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and press these inward because that reduces the amount of bulk. If I press it this way, I'm gonna make big, giant, bulky blobs that were that are gonna cause me problems when I um, get ready to, to quilt this. And so I don't want that. I want the least amount of bulk. And so I always feel the seam and flip it this way and flip it this way before I decide which way to, to sew. And so, or I mean press, I'm sorry. And so these are gonna have the least amount of bulk by going in. And so I'll press those inward, which means I will press these up here at the top outward. And normally I don't like to press to the light, I press to the dark, but when it comes to construction, construction matters. And so I'm gonna press these towards the light. And the only reason is to reduce the bulk and to make sure that these pieces are accurate. And like I said, in this one I ended up doing it that way so I won't, so I won't chop that corner. And so now I'm gonna sew these together. I'm gonna nest the seams right here. And when you sew, if you're a new quilter, pin those intersections. And the other thing you're gonna wanna do when you pinch these together is you're gonna to wanna to sew, I kind of pin it so that the seam stays down. You're gonna to wanna to flip it over. And when I sew, I'm gonna make sure that I'm not going too deep into that point so I don't chop it off. And that's important when you're a new sewer. Don't run over your pins. Sewing machines usually don't like it when you do that. So stop right before you get there, flatten that seam. And just flatten it on the other side and just feel for the bulk. Flatten that out. Trim that away and then you're gonna put the last row on. It's gonna be fab. 
This quilt's looking lovely. I'm really happy with it. Ah, oh, look, it didn't get chopped off. Yes. It's the little things when you're a quilter. And so this quilt is going to be so much fun. This little quilt uh, was my dream for a while. And see that? I'm not liking how that goes. So I may uh, fillet this seam. See how this seam was looking like it was going to get a lot of bulk? I'm just going to take it. I'm going to swirl the seam up here at the corner, which means some of the bulk is going down and some of the bulk is going up. So you're just going to take and, and uh, kind of wrestle with that just a minute and then flip those seams down. And that's because I don't want any bulk in that corner. Like I said, do it whichever way will cause you the least amount of problems. Yep, definitely going to snip that and, and lay it down. I don't sneak, snip the seams ever because that stresses me out that they're going to be a weak seam down the road. But this is going to be a gorgeous, gorgeous block. And look at that. I didn't lose any of my points. And I'm going to press. Whenever I press, I just kind of hold my piece as to not stretch it. And I come along those seam lines and I press to the outside, trying not to get any bulk in here. I'm just checking, make sure I'm not puckering that. If you get a little spot like this where you're like, hmm, why is there a little bit of a wave? You can always come back and check that seam. And look, there's a tiny wobble. And all you've got to do is come in and stitch it really quick and get rid of that wobble. And I might do that because I'm not going to chop my seam. So I'll just take it over to the machine while I'm working. And I'm just going to straighten it out where I wobbled a little bit when I was sewing. And that's how you fix your little boo-boos as you go. So that seam is open a little bit and I'm going to come in and I'm going to fix that. Super important to fix your little boo-boos as you go. You're going to be happier with your quilt over time and you won't get those weird uh, bulges in your seams. There we go. So let me just put that down. And then I'm going to come through. And you can see the pressing line is going to help you. And then I'm going to come back out. I'm super, super OCD. I don't like my quilt to have weird stuff in it. So I do come back in and I fix my little boo-boos as I go. Because I like my stuff to be accurate. Anybody else have that problem? There we go. And that fixed it. And I can feel this right here. So I'm going to flatten that out. I don't like fiddling with it, but I will. All right. And now that seam is the way I want it to. Nice and smooth. And then I have the last one. Same thing. I'm going to flip it to the back. And this needs to be out. So I'm going to take and just kind of finger press it a little bit to coax it into its spot. And then I'm going to press it with my iron. Trying not to distort my blocks. Make sure they're as flat as I can get them. And... That's the last baby on here. I'm going to flip it down, pin those intersections so that they lay flat when I sew. You can feel the bulk, have them nest, take that pin. These are easy head pins. I kind of like them. What kind of pins do you guys prefer? Are you guys pinners or non-pinners? All right. So now this is the last intersection. And I'm going to make sure that I lay this flat when I sew so that it doesn't flip the wrong way. Yep, make sure it lays this way. And I'm going to sew across. And that is the last thing I need to do for the Peaky and Spike Star. You, this star has a lot of names. Like I said, Leggy Star. It's part of the 5440 or Fight quilt pattern, which is a vintage quilt pattern. And just take and make sure that you lay that down. 
Use your finger or a stiletto, but do not get your finger too close to the needle. That's always a no-no. Two things you should not do is sew over a pin and sew over your finger. Those are neither one of those are pleasant. All right, and I think that I am finally done with this baby. So let's bring it over and let's check it out. Make sure I don't have to do anything weird to it. Like I said, I always come in and I press this seam. Then I flip it. I didn't chop off that star leg. And look, it's looking pretty good, friends. Glass head silk pins. Oh, yeah, I'm a pinner. Magic pins are it. I don't know if you guys have seen these with the, the little heads. These are called magic pins. And they're lovely because they're easy to grip. And I have these glass head pins as well. So I love pinning. And so I'm, pinning is my thing. All right, so now I'm just going to take this. And I'm going to make sure that my seams go the way that I want. And it looks like I'm going to have the least amount of bulk if I come in. And so this is how it's going to go. Yep, that's not going to be bulky. That's not going to be bulky. So I'm okay here. And so I'm just going to take it. I'm going to press that the way I want it to go. And like I said, don't be afraid to flip your, your seams a different way. And then flip this over. And then from the front, you're going to give your entire block a nice press along those seam lines. Make sure your seams go where you want them to. Some people don't care which way their seams go. I think it matters. Your finished product is much better if you have beautiful flat seams. And then once I'm done with my entire block, um, I'm just going to come in and straighten it out just a hair because it should be pretty close to the correct size. Let me lay it on this block and it should be 12 and a half inches. Actually, it says it's a 12, which is fine. So that means I just had some fat seams, which doesn't matter because all of my blocks are, some of them are 12, some of them are 12 and a half. And so I'm just going to have to work with one single size. And so I'm going to trim this all to 12. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to make sure I leave a fourth of an inch to the outside of that. So I'm just going to sliver trim that as little as possible. I'm going to come to the other side. This one actually looks pretty good. Doesn't look too wobbly. And I'm going to leave a fourth of an inch past those star legs. And that is a little bit bigger than 12 and I'm okay. So when we finish this quilt, there's going to be a one and a half inch border that I've allowed for on the outside of all of these blocks so that you can connect them. So if some of your blocks end up being a tiny bit smaller or a tiny bit bigger, it won't matter. We're all going to make them all match up. And so if your blocks are off a little tiny bit like mine is today, I don't know why. The math should have, the math should have been correct. Maybe some of these seams are just not a scant quarter like they should have been. All right, friends, this is it. This is the block. Uh, definitely take your time with this one. Make sure you trim these templates the correct direction. Make sure you have a nice scant quarter inch so that your block ends up a nice size. It should be at least 12, but uh, you're depending on your printer settings, it may end up a little bit off. And especially if you're in Europe and you're using an A4 size, it may end up a little bit off. So just don't worry about that. As long as all of your blocks are consistent and we can put a sashing around them, we're going to be able to get this quilt together and it's going to look marvelous. All right, friends, this is a beautiful block. I want you to, to get out there and make one. I'm going to make a miniature version of this block for us to put in our quilt. And I'm going to do it with foundation paper piecing because these pieces are going to be itty bitty if we make this into a six and a half inch block. So we're going to get some minis of these and I will post them on the website. All right, friends, this is it. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. 
I hope you had a wonderful spring break for those of you who had spring break this week. Uh, for those of you who haven't had spring break yet, enjoy it next week. But other than that, I will see you in two weeks for Block 10, and we're going to continue with our star series. You guys have a wonderful day. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, to like the channel, subscribe. Go over to the community tab so you can find all the resources I post there. Check the Facebook group. So if you're not in the Facebook group, let me go ahead and put the link in there in the chat for those of you who are not part of the Facebook group because you're going to want to do that. And it's called the Jelly Roll Club Meeting Room. And I will put that in the chat. And so you can join that group. And that's where you can post pictures and you can ask questions. But this block turned out really nice. I like it. And it's going to go on my wall. So if you haven't started, you still have time to catch up. This quilt's going to be beautiful. All right, everybody. You guys have a wonderful week. I'll see you guys later, okay? Bye-bye now. See you later.